Good morning. It's Bernard Nomberg with another episode of Nomberg Law Live. As we do each Tuesday, we come to you at 10 o'clock Central, 8 a.m. Pacific. And I'm so pleased to have David Weinstein and Emily Nomberg with me today. Good morning, guys. Hope you all are doing well. Hey, Dad. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. And we are talking about birthright Israel. A lot of people probably, if you're not Jewish or don't know people in the Jewish community, you're not really familiar with what this is. And these two kids are going to go on the trip at the end of May. We are taping it a few weeks before you're actually seeing this. They'll be on their trip uh, when this actually comes out. And I'm hoping we can get them after their trip to get a little bit of a recap. But guys, uh, I want you to introduce yourself. We'll start with David. Tell us who you are, where do you go to school, David, and just a little bit about yourself. All right, so my name's David Weinstein. I just finished my sophomore year at Michigan State studying political theory and Spanish. I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut, and Judaism's been a big part of my life through my work with BBYO and Hebrew School. You're good, all right, Em? Hey, I'm Emily, I'm Bernard's youngest daughter. Um, I go to the University of Georgia and I just finished my sophomore year as well. Um, I am studying biology with a pre-med intent and like David, I, you know, grew up in a very big Jewish community, but also really kept engaged with BBYO and going to Temple and all that. David's up in the Northeast. You go to school in the Midwest. You're down here in Alabama. How do you guys know each other? So we did BBYO together, kind of, but we didn't actually meet until really towards the end of senior year. We went on a trip together called the March of the Living. Mm -hmm. And David can tell you a little bit about it. Um, and so pretty much the March of the Living is a two-week program where we spend the first week going through Poland and visiting a variety of concentration camps. And then the following week in Israel celebrating the three main holidays, which are Holocaust Remembrance Day, Israeli Sol um, Independence Day, and Israeli Memorial Day. And so by being in those two places where a lot of history has been held for Jewish people, it really puts in perspective those holidays when we're celebrating it with tens of thousands of Jewish people. And there were literally thousands of college and high school kids on this March of the Living, weren't there? Yeah, yeah. Most, along with a lot of adults as well. Yeah. Most kids go their senior year of high school if they're going through BBYO. We had the best two weeks of school for it, but um, I think the trip just the vast like subject of the trip, like everything that you see on the trip really helps. You know, it gets makes people a lot closer. Um, and I think that's how David and I got so close was just going through these things together. Sure. And we had some mutual friends before the trip too, but we didn't really know each other until mm -hmm. that trip. And for people who don't know what BBYO stands for, Emily, what is that? It's the Neighborhood Youth Organization, but I don't think it actually is allowed to use that anymore. Mm -hmm. I think they're actually just BBYO now. Okay, and what, what is it? Um, it's basically a program for, in some places, 8th through 12th grade, and mm -hmm. most places, 9th through 12th grade Jewish kids to you know, get together, have a smaller Jewish community for programming, celebrating holidays, going on summer programs, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So kids like y'all who have a Jewish background and, and upbringing, you get bar bat mitzvah, most, most do, uh, then you're confirmed. Then after that, you're part of, or during that, you're part of a youth group, BBYO, or whatever your organization is called. You guys happened to go on March of the Living when you were in high school. And now that leads us to Birthright. Birthright Israel, or Birthright, what most folks know it as, is a program that's been going on for several decades now. And David, I want you to tell us, what it, what is your understanding? What is Birthright? So just with Israel being such an important place and home for the Jewish people of America, it's really a chance for every Jewish citizen of the United States who's in their uh, late teens, early 20s to have the chance to travel to Israel and really kind of see their homeland in the first person. And for many non-Jewish people, this experience is impossible, but through generous donations over the years, uh, Jewish teens and young adults have this chance really and be able to understand a lot of their background and roots and just really kind of put to face what is um, this important America. 
We lost you just for a little bit, David, on the connection. What was the last thing that you said, bud? Um, just the idea that it really gives Jewish citizens of America the first-hand picture of Israel and how it's important to them and why it's important to them. Very important, especially for, for those who are Jewish or follow uh, Judaism as their religion or their practice. David, have you been to Israel previously? Um, my first time was actually for March of the Living. Besides that, I have not gone. And Emily, you've been a couple of times now. I've been twice now. Um, but so David and I have both been fortunate enough to already have gone to Israel. But for a lot of people, they don't have the resources to go because, I mean, it is flying across an ocean. It's pretty mm -hmm. far way away. And so Birthright really gives every Jewish person the opportunity to go to Israel if they want to. And you know, after the Holocaust, a lot of Jewish people were forced to leave that area and come to places like the U.S. and wherever else. And so this is a really good chance for people to go back to Israel or for younger generations to go back to Israel mm -hmm. and see it, you know, like for themselves and decide maybe I want to stay here, maybe I don't, but at least they got to see it. Um, and honestly, I just want to go back as often as I can. So if I get to go for free, then why not? And this, this trip that y'all are taking, I understand it's a 10 day trip. It's 10 days. Mm -hmm. um, you put down a deposit that as long as you follow the trip rules, you get back by the end. But besides that, the only thing you pay for it is, you know, gifts and souvenirs and stuff like that. Your own personal spending exactly. money. And I'll put in the comments section, the links to Birthright Israel for those of you who may be interested in looking into the program for your children or for your teens. Uh, David, what there are several types. I was looking, doing some research. I know there are many types of trips that are designed to be uh, for specific uh, things that you can do. What is the trip that Emily and you are taking? So Emily and I decided to kind of go for the most uh, basic birthright trip, which is the usual tour throughout Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, especially of the landmarks of the Western Wall. Um, we go briefly to the Temple Mount, which will be cool to see because we did not get to do that for birthright. And then going around Tel Aviv, going to the beaches and just kind of how beautiful that is. And then finally um, hiking up Masada, hiking through the desert, spending a night with the Bedouin camps and um, just really kind of experiencing these um, living situations that we don't really get to have in the United States and firsthand. And especially for the Bedouins, um, on March of the Living, we did not get to do that. So that's one thing I'm really looking forward to this time around. Our program is called Israel Outdoors, um, but there's many different groups you can go with that mm -hmm. are all under the umbrella of Birthright Israel. So I'm assuming that our trip is probably a little bit more outdoor based, but mm -hmm. it is, like David said, like a very generic, like way to, very touristy, like see the big spots of Israel, but even though I've been twice, there are things on our trip that I'm going to get to do for the first time. And just yeah. along with that, because if for the other options, there's one that kind of reflects the um, sect of Judaism that you identify with. So there's more um, orthodox trips where it's um, completely male and female segregated, um, along with different reform trips. And just it really is awesome that you really get your own option to what trip you want to get. I was very impressed. You can do an all sports trip. You can do an all hiking and outdoors and trails and, and rivers trip. It's all, trip. That's yeah, my trip. Um, Emily, tell me, why is it important for you to go on this trip? Why is it important for you to go to Israel? So growing up in the South, I was not always completely surrounded by a huge Jewish community. Birmingham has a decent sized one, but, you know, in I went to the Jewish day school until sixth grade, but after or sixth grade through senior year, I went to a school where I was the only Jewish person in my grade. Um, my first college, there was not a lot of Jewish kids. And fortunately, UGA does have a lot of Jewish students, but it's important for me to keep going back to Israel because I often feel like it's a really good way for me to continue to re-embrace my Judaism and like my culture and seeing it not just having Shabbat dinners, which I love, but I like being able to see it from different perspectives, like with Israelis, just doing things in Israel, just to broaden everything. David, what about you? Why is this trip 
Why is going on birthright, going to Israel important for you? So just a lot of the same stuff that Emily just said, but then specifically in my case, you know, through high school and early parts of college, I dealt with a good amount of anti-Semitism and just kind of being the odd one out sometimes. It's really kind of led me to embrace Israel more as my homeland. And I really cherish any opportunity that I have to go to Israel and experience it just once again and reaffirm my Jewish identity. For people who've never been to Israel, there's a misconception, I'll say, that when you watch the international news or the news in the United States, it's always bad to be in Israel. It's dangerous. It's, it's deadly. There's always bad stuff going on. When you two, and Amelie, you go first, when you were on March of the Living, when you were there on our trip, our family trip, how did you feel about when you were in Israel from a safety and security standpoint? How old was I on our first trip? 2013. So I was 14 on our first trip and I was very, I was kind of paranoid about going the first time just because there was a lot going on in Israel and the surrounding countries mm -hmm. during that time. But as soon as you land in Israel and as soon as you see soldiers in the IDF and just as soon as you're there, you feel safe. I feel safer in Israel than I do here, especially considering all of the shootings that we've had in the United States over the past, well, since a long time. But I do feel safer in Israel, and I know that the news can be scary and all of that, but I do feel safer when I'm there. And David, what about you? When you were there on March of the Living, how did you feel? Emily took the words right out of my mouth. I do feel safer in Israel than America. and. It, it's like it's really hard to see how the news is portraying Israel a lot these days and just to go and see that not a lot of that is true and that you can really just be so happy moving about the country and not fearing for your life like a lot of people in America believe, which is another good reason for that Jewish citizens in America who haven't always embraced their identity for them to go on birth and experience that is very eye opening for them. I actually saw the Iron Dome working when we were there mm -hmm. what i don't remember where we were i think um, we were in tiberius i think by okay, the Galilee. yeah and we saw like a little spark in the sky mm -hmm. and then we looked up on twitter mm -hmm. to just to check and see what it was but and it was a drone being intercepted by the iron dome tell me emily i don't know if you've had a chance with finals just finishing to really study the itinerary coming up for your trip but my question to you is and this is for you too david what are you most looking forward to on this trip? So I have two things. I've never actually hiked up Masada. I've been at the top, but I've never gotten to do the hike up, mm -hmm. only down. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to do that, and then also to go back to the Dead Sea. Well, that and maybe that'll be in the same day. Yeah, it usually is. Mm -hmm. And David? Um, I think I'm very excited to go to Jerusalem again and go to the Western Wall and just, uh, even outside the Judaism standpoint, it's so cool for a city like that to be a major home to three of the major religions in the world. And so just kind of um, getting a chance to see uh, the Western Wall and then the Temple Mount get as near to the Good Dome of the Rock as I can. I, I think that's very cool to see other religions as well. It is very, very cool. Not that either of you have asked me, but I'm going to tell you what I would most looking forward to I'm excited for this. is going into one of the shooks and getting some shawarma because that mm -hmm. is just I could eat my weight through through the, the city shooks. Um, guys, I can't thank you enough for spending a few minutes with with me talking about this. And, and in closing, I want to I want to ask you guys if a family member, a friend, someone in your neighborhood or your temple, your JCC comes to you and says, why should my college kid go on birthright? Emily, what would you tell the, the parents or the family? How would you, you explain to them why it's something they should do? Um, I guess just because I have been to Israel twice, I know what it's like to be there. And it's kind of hard to describe what it's like to be there, but I think everyone should have the opportunity to feel what it's like to be in Israel as a Jewish person. David? For me, I just remember the first time I went and we stopped at the beach, the feeling of just looking around and not having any words to describe that moment. I want everyone else to feel that way too when they're in Israel for the first time and just be amazed by it. Fantastic. Guys, thank you very much. 
If you're interested in visiting Israel, if you have children who may qualify, who are Jewish and of the right age, look into Birthright Israel. Thousands and thousands of American teens have gone over the last 25 or so years, however long the program has been. I know these two are very excited about going. I really hope we get to catch up a few minutes after their trip. Thank you again for your time. Guys, this is Bernard Nomberg with another weekly episode of Nomberg Law Live. As we do most every Tuesday, we we'll come to you at 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us, and we will check you another time. Take care.